This is Bishu, the capital of the Eastern Cape. It's a huge province. With Bishu situated in the southeast, the vast distances to its furthest regions make it a difficult province to administer. Education in particular has suffered. Rural schools are ill-equipped and teachers' morale is low. The education department stands accused of being corrupt and inept with little regard for people. The man in charge of Eastern Cape education is Stone Sizani. As MEC, the buck stops with him. Two years ago, he appointed a consultant from the Limpopo province as Superintendent General of Education in the Eastern Cape. Modedima Manya's brief was simple, sought out a corrupt and inefficient department, but his tenure was short-lived. Within weeks, he claimed to have uncovered widespread management irregularities. He suspended several senior managers, some highly connected. Then he began receiving death threats. After a turbulent three months, he fled the province. Now, the task of turning around education in the Eastern Cape rests with Acting Superintendent General P.G. Kokweni and Deputy Director General Ewan Harris. Accompanying them, communication spokesperson Papama Mfenyana. They have their work cut out for them. And you have a very huge department with um, more than 6,400 schools, 74,000 employees, as I told you, spread over a huge distance, perhaps from one point to the other, it would take you eight hours to drive, if not, if not more. So a very dispersed uh, situation where schools are in, in, in urban areas tend to be rich, and as you've seen probably in your visits across the country, you'd have seen uh, schools in shocking states. Mazwe is acting principal at a school near Matatiel. Although the town is in KwaZulu-Natal, her school lies in the Eastern Cape. The nearest regional office is in Kokstad. Morning, Lena. She's lost faith in the education department. The community built the school and relies on donations for equipment. What type of fruit is this one? Huh? Yes? An April. Class? April. Pupils are still waiting for the department to deliver this year's textbooks. If we want to get some more textbooks, we go to other schools and ask and beg them to give us the books. And the learners are suffering to the school. And it's a very, very, very big disaster in these schools. It's too bad. I move up and down and write some letters. And they take these letters and they told me they are taking the letters to the original office, Coxted. From Coxted to Bishop. I don't know where is the process now. It's very, very, very bad. They are depressing us. Also affecting her morale is the fact that she hasn't received money owed to her by the department. Teachers are entitled to an upgrade if they improve their qualifications. Winnie Mazwe got a degree and did a management diploma, but hasn't been upgraded. I don't know what kind of a, a department is this. I don't know. And we're always talking with our SATU, our union our SATU members there in the offices. And they told us they take the, our grievances to, to the department and they, have no, they get no response for that. Percy Ulbricht and Mne Ndongeni represent the South African Democratic Teachers Union in this northeastern Cape region. SATU is the largest teachers union in the country and once had a good relationship with government. Now, its officials say, they are reaching the end of their tether. Missy. Days are spent sorting out payment issues. 
They say Bishu appears to have no accurate record of educators and their finances in this region. Teachers are frustrated. They are beginning even to lose hope to us because we take this thing to the department, we raise with these things in the meetings. They say we'll address this thing, promise with a certain time frame. Nothing happens. Instead, things become worse. If 30% of, uh, of stationery and textbooks have been delivered, then it is a miracle. With there's this tendency, we have a perception that nobody cares about this area. People are comfortable with their revolving chairs in Bisho. They don't mind about what is taking place in our areas. Some teachers in this region have been awaiting outstanding payments for three years. Evelyn Makalika lives in the village of Nkau, close to the Lesotho border. She was appointed as a substitute in 1999 when a teacher took ill, but she was never paid. The following year, the position was still vacant, so she applied for a permanent post. She's now teaching in that post, but she's not getting paid. I'm working for nothing because I don't get any money. I'm working, teaching all these kids, but getting nothing. Why do you do it? It's because I, I, I can see that children are suffering. There, are, there is a shortage of teachers here. Then I see it to me that it is better to help the learners so that they can have their bright future. It's my right because I have worked for that man. I want it. And even if I, I've got some means, I would have gone there and tell them, bring back my money. I've worked for that man. Her village is high in the hills, three hours' drive from Kokstad, eight hours from Bishu. Money is tight here. One person's salary can feed an extended family. Her substitute teaching check apparently lay at the Kokstad regional office for months. No one informed her that it had finally arrived. It was sent back to Bishu. Two years ago, she was told her permanent employment papers were being processed. But to even today, I haven't got it. Do you still remember? the approval that we received about the employment. Yes, madam. Good. Do you still remember myself signing the assumption of duty form for you? Yes, madam. Do you still remember the letters of a follow-up that I tried to write for you? Yes, madam. She's not the only staff member with a problem. The principal says her teachers constantly battle to get even the smallest amounts due to them. Uh, I made some follow-ups to Cox State, uh, go and check my, uh, my documents. Uh, I met a lady there, Nomkobo Obongwana, and she said, I will send your particulars to, to Bishop. Until now, she's saying, I will send your particulars to Bishop, but nothing has happened. Last week, Thursday, they told us in one meeting that they lost all the documents that were submitted in 1999 and 2000. Mm -hmm. So teachers who submitted for adjustments and all these things in 99 and 2000, they must resubmit again. And nobody is, these ones here are saying, no, these, those in Bishop must write because they don't know what things was lost. They must write and indicate that these were lost. The Bishop people are not prepared to write and these ones are not prepared to act. Who is caught in between the process? Teachers are suffering. You have all the, we've been making all the submissions. You, if you can read these things yourself as a person, if you have got a heart, you can cry if you can hear the stories that are here. Dealing with Bishu from a distance can be a frustrating experience. Now the, the office phone is ringing, nobody is picking it up. Hello, uh, Mr. Malungozi, it's uh, Ndongen from Cox State here. Yeah. Uh, I, I wonder if you can be able to phone me back. I'm getting frustrated now on the same matter that I spoke with you some time ago concerning Ms. Nomganga, uh, the lady whose, 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 whose salary for March 20th was defaulted in a closed account, which we had indicated that we had sorted that one out. Uh, but at the end of the month, that lady could not get the money up until now. The Department of Education in Bishu blames payment delays on the province's finance department. For these people to have been paid, it goes to another department for authorization. Some of these cases have been outstanding since 1999. Shocking. Not because education is not doing its work, because somewhere down the line, a combination of education and the other departments that are supposed to authorize these particular transactions were never authorized. 
On almost every working day, Mne Ndongen takes himself off to the Eastern Cape's Regional Department of Education in Coxton. In January, six officials were suspended from this office for corruption. They apparently redirected money from teachers' salaries into their own accounts. The teachers haven't been reimbursed. There's these three teachers whose money was stolen last year in October. The departmental officials in future took all their particulars, took all the documents that they want, that are needed in order for the teacher to be paid if he didn't get the amount. Affidavits and everything. I can mention names. They took affidavits from here. They went with, left with them for Bishop. Up until today, those teachers have not received their money. Our members are coming forward and they're also highlighting that there's discrepancies in the amounts that is reflected on their salary slips as compared to what has been deposited into the bank. So obviously, this corruption is still continuing. I don't think the, the head of the monster has actually been crushed. Bishu says steps are being taken to combat corruption. I don't want to say too much in this particular interview, yeah. but if they change an account number today, okay, uh, I know literally within hours on my desk. Mm -hmm. That is how sophisticated our systems are here now, to track happening? fraud. Oh yes, absolutely it's happening. We know exactly how many cases happened last month. We know which cases, where it happened, we know who changed the transactions. It would help matters if teachers received their salary slips every month. Then they'd be able to keep track of deductions, which are often erratic. People don't understand. They will say, no, you're getting the money. Why do you bother about the salary advice? But what happens with the department, where you find yourself that you were on a medical aid scheme, and then all of a sudden you have been withdrawn from a medical aid scheme, you don't know that because the salary advice is not there. The month goes, the second one goes, the third one goes, you don't get the salary advice to advise you that these are the things that are still deducted in your salary advice. On the fourth month, your child or yourself, you get sick, you go to a hospital. When you're supposed to pay the fees in the hospital, you want to find that you are no longer a member of that medical aid. I acknowledge that, yes, there has been a problem about them getting the particular slips. But in terms of the plan of action of dealing with it, to dealing with it comprehensively so that it never happens again, in terms of our list of priorities, it's really only in four months' time that problem will be solved totally. Satu says those in charge of the education department are laughable. Union officials constantly compare them to their predecessor, the much talked about Modedima Manya. They are in their jobs longer than what Manya was. But in terms of delivery, we thought at least they would say new brooms would sweep clean. And you'll start, first of all, uh, salary advices will be uh, on time salaries would be paid and there would be a dent being made in this backlog. But it seems as though it's back to what we would call normal. Manya fled the education department and the province more than a year ago. Despite this, his name still means a lot. It was only after Manya came in that we felt that the issues that affect teachers are being taken up seriously by the department. Manya was very, very good to us as a gentleman. And we can be very happy if, if he can come back again. Ever since Manya left, the, the morale of the, 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 the communities has actually gone down. Education's new directors say the only reason Manya's name lives on is because he constantly blew his own trumpet. There are different management styles. Our particular style is not to be noisy, seagull style of management. And our, our, our style is simply just to put in systems and get the job done improve the quality of teaching and learning. So we could have gone on. and We could have made a call in the media on every little issue and made a big deal out of it. I prefer, and the management prefer, that we just solve all the problems. And, and, and at the end of the day, we want to just win the Premier's Award for Excellence. That's what we're going for. Seventy-year-old Cassie Madwaba lives in the shadow of the Kiba Stone in the Herschel district of the Eastern Cape. She began teaching in 1954 and retired several years ago. Teaching, she says, was her life. Very much you and my children even now, they know when they see me, they imitate me. And they will call me even now 
those are that I took. Because for this, in my later cycle, it was geography. I was a teacher in the house. <laughs> but she hasn't managed to access her final reward from the Department of Education, her pension, a fund she'd been contributing to all her working life. I went personally there, and when I got there, they, they, they checked, they got files and files of, of books. Then they checked and checked, and they say that they do not see my name. Then I left. After a while, I, I asked them, how far are they? And they said, they found Mtuaba. When I, write, I wrote to them, they, they did not respond. Up to now, when I, I phone and ask that one, no response. Not a cent from the government. Uh, not nice. She's not the only one. Today, she and some friends, also former teachers, are meeting with union officials for the umpteenth time to discuss the whereabouts of their pensions. In the absence of good news from Bishu, Satu officials take them out to lunch in Stavspreit, the nearest town. Satu says there are many other pensioners in this district who haven't been paid by the education department. That's the kind of situation that you get here in the Eastern Cape, almost daily. There is a lot of teachers here, for instance, in the Eastern Cape, hundreds and some odds of pensioners only, case of pensioners, who have not received their gratuities, you name them a lot, you see, here in the Eastern Cape. And just the last Saturday, we buried one teacher here, Miss November. She has never give, 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 received a cent from this department. That's the situation that you are sitting with here. You know, you know, you know, if you die in the Eastern Cape, the implication <coughs> is your benefits are buried with you. Mm. Your dependents gain nothing, totally nothing. The actual payments of pensions are not done by the Department of Education or any department, it's done by a national department. Mm. Okay, so, but they can only do it if we submit them with the documentation in the order they want it again. And so it's identifying where those loopholes have come in. But yes, I'm not pleased the way that um, some pensioners were treated after serving the department for 40 years. Staff in regional offices say it's not surprising because documentation is in complete disarray. They say it's a nightmare trying to process applications. This is the registry where teachers' records are kept. It's often impossible to find details of leave, bonuses and resignations. No one seems to know where anything is. Well, it's not surprising at all, because you can see the conditions we're working under. They are very chaotic, so there's no production here, because we are short-staffed here. We don't have registry clerks. These files are to be taken to the registry, but there's no one to take them to the registry, because we don't have registry clerks. We are understaffed, no equipment. We are in nine in the office and using one computer. Nine in the office. It is sicker as so clear as Nazon, eh? So share it is sicker so by three it is can a one. Three one desk. Umsa umsa benzuela sicker a piso. Sambu submitted to him a document to Kany, Kayuan. Submitted four times document to Kaya a piso. Yeah, it's a chaos, you know. They expect a good work, they expect a production, you know. When can, where, where can you get a, a production, a, a, a right, and the first one? You know, we can't, you know. Bishu says only a few of its regions are experiencing problems and that it's moving swiftly to sort them out. I want to indicate to you that a team from Bisho led by us will be in Kokstad tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. But a week after their visit to Kokstad, staff were as gloomy as ever. They said to us that they're going to uh, ask, ask some questions to some consultants in the head office, give back our report, even now. It's Friday tomorrow. We, we didn't receive any report coming from them. Because every time they are here, we are telling them they are a problem. Every time, every time. Even last week, they were here. Satu regional officials say this never happened when Manya was in charge. For instance, Manya was here around about three to two months. 
And in that, in that space of time, he managed to clear the backlog. And our cause here is mm. not the mania, the man, yes. you see. It's, the, it's mania, the caliber of the person that we want. Even if you put any person there, but the caliber of the person must be able to deal with these issues. We were told that Manya was not the only person. He was working with a collective of men and women, good men and women Where in the province in Bisho. And he was not alone in this thing. So if he is away, it doesn't mean that it's the end of the story. Now we want to see where these good men and women that were told of when Manya left in the province. Manya now lives in Johannesburg. His life has nothing to do with education anymore but he still receives phone calls from teachers in the Eastern Cape, and he's flattered that people who never even met him felt his presence. But it gives you great comfort. I mean, you, you really feel comfortable that there are people who really value the little contribution that you made. You know? But it also emphasizes, it affects people emotionally when they don't get paid. And maybe under the homeland system, yeah, people could spend this whole time not getting paid. But if you look at the actual implications, social, economic, and otherwise, of that person who's not paid, that one person, it's a serious matter. It, 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 it's quite serious as an issue. These days, Manya can be found helping out in his wife's pharmacy. He still even remembers the names of the teachers he was unable to help because his contract was cut short. He says all he did in the Eastern Cape was to make himself accessible to people and their problems, part of government policy. When people become inaccessible, when people co continue to be confused about what do I need to do to get my pension or, you know, that, that on its own, doesn't matter how small you might think that is, that shows you that that policy might not necessarily be finding a full-scale application. Officials in Bishu say Manya merely gave the impression that he was efficient. It's difficult for a person to come today and say everything is wrong. And tomorrow you say, I've sorted out everything. And you leave the other day, everything is wrong. Manya has exchanged the bureaucracy of Bishu for the high rise of Johannesburg. And he doesn't really want to talk much about those days because he's suing the Eastern Cape Premier and the MEC of Education for defamation of character. He believes they should be more accountable. When I started in the Eastern Cape, my salary was paid in the first month. My salary was paid in the first month. Then I asked the question, is there any reason why other people's salaries are not paid in the first month? Whether no action should be taken against anybody when teachers don't get paid, when they're supposed to get paid, you know, when pensioners don't get paid. I mean, certainly there must be a basis for somebody. Somebody must take responsibility for that ordinarily. Bishu's education directors say they are on top of the problem. There is a provincial initiative by the director general of the province, mm -hmm. and it's called GTRS, stands for Get the Record Straight. It's been an intensive process to, to get the files ready for, of everybody. Yeah. But far away in Kokstad, Nge Ndongeni is still getting complaints from teachers who haven't been paid. And he still spends hours on the phone to Bishu. I you can think it's an exaggeration. You phone the whole day, the phone is ringing. Nobody ever picks the phone. Sorry. Sadu, good morning. 